Welcome to the last Wednesday's Word of 2022. It's been a great year and I'm so thankful for everyone who's been joining me on this adventure. And if you're not doing a daily Bible reading, someone forwarded this to you or you just stumbled upon this, let me encourage you to make that a practice. Take every day and spend some time in God's Word. What me and a lot of the people here at church do at Cascade Christian Reformed Church is use the daily audio Bible. You can have a podcast or on their website where a guy named Brian reads the Bible, or every week we have printed out versions available at church where you can read it on your own. And what it'll do is take you through the Old and New Testaments and then the books of Psalms and Proverbs, twice through Psalms and Proverbs, once through the Old and New Testaments throughout the whole year. And that daily practice doesn't take too much time. It takes maybe 10 to 15 minutes at the most, but it builds a habit that trains your soul. Because here's the thing about spirituality. It works just like all the other things we do in life. We understand that if we want to run a marathon, we need to train. We need to, to hit the road. We need to not just do one run thinking that one run is going to make us 100% better. We have to do a daily practice to improve our flexibility, our strength, and our endurance. If you want to lose weight, it takes a daily practice of eating clean and staying away from sugar. And if you want to develop patience and godliness and faithfulness and and just faith in God, it takes a daily practice there as well. Dallas Willard uses that analogy where he talks about training versus trying. We understand that we have to train our bodies and our minds, but we often think that we could just try to pray and try to be patient and try to be godly, and we try and fail and then we give up. It doesn't work that way. Faithfulness and spiritual formation comes through training. And faith, the fuel that faithfulness and to fuel that spirituality comes from hearing God's word. In Romans 10, it says, how can they unbelieve? How can we have faith unless we hear? And what we need to hear is God's word. In John chapter 17, Jesus talks about that he would pray for people who would believe based on God's word. And so God's word is the seed of faith that will grow in us. Um, the whole parable of the sower is that way. The, the seed is scattered, which is God's word. And our goal is to have hearts that can hear it and let it grow and produce a bountiful crop. So if you're not doing a daily practice of reading God's word, maybe take 2022 as a great, or 2023 as a year to start that. Where you say, okay, this year, every day, as much as I can, I'm gonna be in God's word. And if you fail, if you miss a few days, here's the secret. Nobody's judging you. Just go ahead and skip ahead, catch up. Don't carry guilt. Don't cram yourself. I mean, there's a, there's a goodness to getting through the whole Bible. But that's a helpful goal. But the real goal is to have that daily practice that forms your soul. And so in the same way, if you're trying to lose weight and you end up going out to eat or being at a friend's house and you overeat, you don't want to starve yourself in the next couple of days. That's just not healthy. In the same way, if you miss a few days reading the Bible, don't try to cram it all in and, and feel all this guilt and pressure. Just maybe catch up. Jump to today and pick it up from there. That's something that I'll do. I, I've been grateful that I've rarely missed over these past few years since I've been doing this practice. And I don't say that as a boast. It's not been something that's been in my 52 years of life. There's been maybe two years of very faithful Bible reading. It's been very hit or miss before that. But when I have messed up, it's that grace that helps. And let me share a little bit from this past um, season's reading just to show you the gems that you'll find. At the very end of the Old Testament, there's a book called Zechariah. It's the second to last in the Old Testament. And in Zechariah chapter 3 is one of the most beautiful pictures of grace that you'll see in the whole Bible. Zechariah is having a vision. And in this vision, he sees the high priest Joshua in the Holy of Holies standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan is there standing at his right side accusing him. And he's accusing him because Joshua was supposed to be at the, uh, dressed in the high priestly garments where they're colored like the sky, a beautiful turban, all the gemstones that represent the tribes of Israel, ceremonial garments that showed that he was clean. But instead, Joshua was before the Lord dressed in filthy rags and Satan accuses him for it. And then the Lord, who is the angel of the Lord, and many scholars argue that the angel of the Lord is a pre-incarnate Jesus. This is a theophany, God showing up before the incarnation. And God is there through Jesus and declares, take those robes off him, take the rags off him, and dress him in fine linen. And 
he's clothed in beautiful, shimmering white clothes and a pure um, tur turban on his head. And that's a sign of what God does for all of us. We all stand before the Lord in filthy rags. Our good deeds, even the best things we do, it says in Philippians, are like filthy rags, nothing to be boastful about. That's how we present ourselves to God. Everything we do has mixed motives and false alliances, and, and we come with, with, with filth to God. And we can't clean them. We can't fix them on our own. We are not strong enough or holy enough to clean our own sins up. And so what Jesus does is takes our sins on himself and gives us his righteousness. This is 2 Corinthians 5 where it says that God made him who had no sin to become sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That's called a big theological word, imputed righteousness. Jesus lived the life I should have lived and died the death I should have died. So all of my sins go on Jesus and all of Jesus's righteousness comes on me. And it's just a pure gift. That's why it says in Ephesians that it is by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it's a gift of God, not by works, so no one can boast. If I could clean up my own sins, if I could clean my own clothes, to use the, the Zechariah 3 metaphor, if I could wash my own clothes, knit new clothes, make myself look beautiful, then I could stand before God boasting at all the good things I've done. But there's no boasting. It's sheer grace, a sheer gift. I stand in filthy rags and God comes and he clothes me in righteousness. And that little gem, so beautiful, is hidden way at the back of the Old Testament. And it's through that daily practice of being in God's word that we can not just find that, but then begin to understand it. Where it's not just an illustration, not just a random vision, but it's something that ties the whole Bible together that says, okay, this is what God is in the business of always doing. Abraham believed, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Same thing, where God is giving Abraham righteousness, credit, where he didn't deserve credit. All he did was believe that God could do something and then God did the work. That's a theme that covers the whole Bible, that we're saved by grace through faith. And so let me encourage you to keep in God's word or to get in God's word. I'm gonna be sending this out with an email. If you're just watching this video and you're not getting the email, I'll put a link in the show notes underneath it but so that you can find this. But my hope is that together as a church and even beyond the church, the whole community of faith that's involved in this, that over the coming year, we can build our faith through reading God's word. If you have any questions or need more help about this, feel free to reach out, I'm always available. Until next time and next year, God bless.